I stood in the corner, my sister's voice on the cell phone echoing in my ear as I peered into the next room where the party buzzed with laughter. Regret gnawed at me. Agreeing to my sister's blackmail had brought me to this point, and now it was too late to change anything. If only I hadn't succumbed, maybe I'd be facing a different kind of trouble, but at least not this surreal transformation. She had threatened to expose what I did to the car, and, in hindsight, facing mom's wrath might have been the better option. Yet, here I was, navigating a party in unfamiliar territory. The dress-up games with Jenny had innocently started months ago, but they morphed into something beyond my control. I was certain she orchestrated the incident that exposed me to mom as Lacey, leaving me shocked and cornered. Jenny, adept at manipulation, convinced mom that I was genuinely confused about my identity. It became an excuse for more Lacey time, with mom seemingly enchanted by the idea of me as her daughter. The wardrobe expanded, and I found myself navigating a social gathering as someone I wasn't sure I wanted to be. As I stood there, Jenny's instructions echoed in my mind. The fear of not being believed hung heavy. Adapting to this alternate persona had become a twisted routine, and I couldn't shake the feeling that Lacey might soon be a permanent presence. At least, in some bizarre twist, I had become accustomed to looking as cute as Jenny, a small consolation in this bewildering journey. Navigating the party, I felt like a stranger in my own life. Jenny's guidance through the phone persisted, instructing me on how to interact, what to say, and even how to carry myself. Each step felt like a performance, a facade I reluctantly wore. I couldn't escape the sinking feeling that my true self was slipping away, overshadowed by this persona Jenny had crafted. As I entered the room, eyes turned towards me, scrutinizing the unfamiliar face. The charade continued, and I played my part, trying to blend in while battling the dissonance within. It was surreal how easily I slipped into this role, a testament to how much of myself I had lost to Jenny's whims. The party unfolded, a surreal blend of laughter and chatter that felt detached from the reality I once knew. Lacey, a character created out of desperation, was now seamlessly integrated into this social scene. Conversations flowed, and I responded mechanically, the disconnection between my external appearance and internal turmoil growing. Despite the discomfort, a part of me acknowledged the twisted beauty in the situation. I had become a creation of circumstance, a living paradox of identities. The compliments thrown my way added to the confusion, did they see me or the character I portrayed? As the night wore on, I couldn't escape the realization that this might not be a temporary act. Lacey seemed poised to become a permanent fixture, a lingering consequence of choices I never truly made. The line between reality and fiction blurred, leaving me standing at the intersection of my own identity crisis, unsure of the road ahead. The night pressed on, a paradoxical blend of discomfort and acceptance. I moved through the crowd with a practiced smile, suppressing the nagging doubts that clawed at the edges of my consciousness. The more I played the role of Lacey, the more I felt the lines between reality and fiction blur. Jenny's voice in my ear continued to guide me, becoming a relentless reminder of the puppeteer pulling my strings. The laughter around me fueled a growing resentment, I longed for the freedom to be myself again. How did I let it get this far? The answer lingered in the past, a series of compromises that led to this strange masquerade. I stole glances at my reflection, catching glimpses of a person I hardly recognized. Lacey, with her borrowed charm and artificial grace, had taken center stage. It was a facade carefully constructed to navigate a social realm that felt increasingly alien. The party became a surreal theater where I played the lead role in a script written by someone else. As the night wore on, I found solace in a quiet corner, away from prying eyes. A profound sense of isolation settled in, intensified by the contrast between the lively gathering and my internal struggle. I wondered if anyone truly saw me beneath the layers of this forced persona. In that moment of solitude, I faced a pivotal choice. Did I continue down this path, embracing Lacey as an enduring part of my existence, or did I summon the courage to reclaim my true self? The answer remained elusive, but the yearning for authenticity echoed louder than the applause of approval that surrounded me. As the night drew to a close, I carried the weight of uncertainty. 
The journey back to who I once was seemed daunting, yet the prospect of perpetuating this charade was equally disheartening. In the quiet aftermath of the party, I stood at the crossroads of identity, contemplating the road ahead with a mixture of trepidation and hope.